Good morning. The peace of the Lord be with you. Lord be with you. Our opening hymn this morning is the Beatitudes, hymn number 401 in your hymn.
The first reading is from Joshua chapter 24, verses 1 through 3 and 14 through 25. Then Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem, and some of the elders, the heads, and the judges, and the officers of Israel, and they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Your fathers lived of old beyond the Euphrates, Terah, and father of Abraham and Nahor, and they served other gods. Then I took your father Abraham from beyond the river, and led him through all the land of Canaan, and made his offering many. I gave him Isaac. Now therefore fear the Lord, and serve him in sincerity and faithfulness. Put away the gods which your father served beyond the river and in Egypt, and serve the Lord. And if you be unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve whether the gods your father served in the region beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it is the Lord our God who brought us, and our fathers from whom the land of Egypt out of the house of bondage and who did those great signs in our sight, and preserved us in all the way we went, and among all the people through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites who lived in the land. Therefore, we will also serve the Lord, for he is our God. But Joshua said to the people, You cannot serve the Lord, for he is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions or your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, then he will turn and do you harm, and consume you after having done you good. And the people said to Joshua, Nay, but we, serve, we will serve the Lord. Then Joshua said to the people, You are witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen the Lord to serve him. They said, We are witnesses. He said, Then put away the foreign gods which you are among you, and incline your heart to the Lord, the God of Israel. And the people said to Joshua, The Lord our God we will serve, and his voice we will obey. So Joshua made a covenant with the people that day, and made statutes and ordinances for them at Shechem. Please join me in the reading of Psalm 78. We'll be doing verses 1 through 8. The refrain can be found in your hymnal on page 659. Give ear, O my people, to the teaching. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings from old, things that we have heard and known that our ancestors have told us. We will tell the glorious deeds of the Lord, the wonders he has done. We will not hide from them their children. We will tell to the coming generation the glorious deeds of the Lord and his might, and the wonders he has done. We will tell the glorious deeds of the Lord, the wonders he has done. He established a decree in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel which he commanded our ancestors to teach to their children, that the next generation might know them, the children yet unborn, and rise up and tell them to their children. We will tell, tell the glorious deeds of the Lord, the one who is in time, so that they should set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments, and that they should not be like their ancestors, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation whose heart was not steadfast, whose spirit was not faithful to God. We will tell the glorious deeds of the Lord, the one who sees God. A gospel reading this morning can be found in Matthew 5, verses 1 through 
13. Matthew 5, verses 1 through 13. Seeing the crowds, he went up on the mountains, and when he sat down, the disciples came to him, and he opened up his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when men revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my name. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward in heaven for your, for your reward in heaven is great. For so men were persecuted, the prophets were before you. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trodden underfoot by man. God's word for God's people. Praise be to God. <coughs>
comes to Egypt and becomes the second in command. Joseph makes the proclamation and claim to his brothers that what you meant for evil, God meant for good. And as that takes place, Joseph brings the children of Israel into the land of Egypt. And in that time of the land of Egypt, the Pharaoh that Joseph was so in favor with passes away. And yet another Pharaoh comes to reign, who knew not Joseph, who was not favored by Joseph. And so those individuals, those individuals that Joseph had brought from his homeland to Egypt during the seven years of plentiful and seven years of drought and famine, now became slaves. And during that 432 years of slavery, these people wondered, would we one day be free? Then God in his infinite mercy, God in his patience, God in his um, on time God brings Moses. A baby who will become one of Pharaoh's princes. A baby who will come and lead his people out of 432 years of bondage. And as he leads these two million people out of bondage, they go and receive the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments that men and women and children and boys and girls will live under and understand and grow with. Yet, in the midst of that, through the lack of patience, through the lack of what they knew in Egypt, they want to return back to Egypt because it was most familiar to them. Yet, in the midst of that, a trip that should have taken 11 days to get to the promised land ended up being 40 years. And as we get to the end of those 40 years, Moses and his impatience Moses in his anger issues strikes the rock and God does not let him go into the promised land. And as Moses dies in the mountains, a new leader comes about, and that would be Joshua. And Joshua makes the declaration that in my father's house we will serve the Lord. And in Joshua's reign, they served God despite coming out of Egypt, despite them dying off in 40 years, despite them following idols, in Joshua's time, they followed and served God. And in the end of this text, this is what Joshua says. But the people said to Joshua, no, we will serve the Lord. Then Joshua said, you are witnesses against yourself that you have chosen to serve the Lord. You are witnesses, they replied. Now, then, said Joshua, throw away the former gods that are among you and yield your hearts to the Lord, the God of Israel. And the people said to Joshua, we will serve the Lord and obey him. The most interesting part about this text, my brothers and sisters, is that we all have a heart that we want to just do the right thing. No matter what walk of life we're in, I am convinced that most human beings, and I say most, are not born to do evil. Most human beings want to do the right thing, especially if we are examples for them to do right thing. Moses was that leader. Joshua was even a greater leader. Joshua, a warrior. Joshua, a person who followed leadership. Joshua, chosen by God to lead this next generation into the promised land. Joshua, a man who said, as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. It's for that reason that Joshua made that claim to them and said, you are witnesses against 
yourself. And I, in my study, interpret that to mean you have decided that you are going to do the right thing. So I'm going to hold you accountable to it. You ever been told? I look at the little man right here. I'm assuming that's next to his mom. He probably tells mom, I'm going to do the right thing this time, mom. I promise. I promise I'm going to do the right thing. And you and I in the same note have also said to our parents, I'm going to do the right thing, grandma. I'm going to do the right thing, dad. I'm going to do the right thing, mom. And unfortunately, unfortunately, maybe by the end of the week, we've done something that we should not have done. These two, these people, even though it's adults, are finding themselves in the same situation. We're going to serve God. We're going to honor God because we know how good and God has been to us. God has taken care of us. God has looked out for us. But yet, we have this thing called spiritual amnesia. As good as we get away from the mirror, we will forget what we promised God. We will forget what we promised our parents. We will forget what we promised our spouse. We will forget what we promised our friends. But the good news today is, the good news today is, we always have the opportunity the next day for another opportunity to do it right. What do you mean, Pastor? I messed up yesterday. But you got today. For tomorrow may not come. And in your today, you have the opportunity to tell God, I messed up yesterday, God. But you got me today. And you got me today because I'm among the living. And every opportunity that we get to be among the living, we get the opportunity to do it right. And I know it's not easy. But if God is for us, who can be against us? If God loves me, who can be against me? And so no matter what time it is in your life, you have the right opportunity to do it right. Serving God does come with requirements. That word requirement. Somebody who's been in school for years, somebody who's had to work for many years at the university, even being required to be here this morning one time, Everybody has requirements. And the question becomes is who do you serve? Are the requirements to the church? Are the requirements to me? Are the requirements to the deacons or the trustees? Or are the requirements to God? I would suggest to you today that because He woke you up and He started you on your way. The requirement is to God. And so, as Joshua told the people, and as we are charged with that same word, go and serve God. In the first book, in the first book of Joshua, when Joshua is, well, is giving the charge, Moses makes a statement to Joshua. And one of my mentors used to always say this as he began to serve. He would say, be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Do not let this book out of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything that's written then, this is the world, then you will be prosperous and successful. What am I here to The law they were talking about was the same five books that Moses wrote, the Torah. You see, my brothers and sisters, no matter where you are in life, we all need a roadmap. Our roadmap for many of us as children is our parents. Our roadmap for many people who don't have parents can be grandparents. Our roadmap at times if you are a godmother, a godfather, an aunt, an uncle for a young person or even an elderly person is 
the roadmap. But in this context, in this day and time, we have the Word of God. The Word of God. When I started going to Bible study some 30 something years ago, I watched a group of individuals in my old church sit there and read the Bible. And I would say to myself, oh my, this is so boring. Boy, I don't want to be in school again. Not realizing, particularly the individual that was teaching the Word of God, this entrepreneur I want to talk about, Dr. Elmer Green. When he taught the Bible, he had a slow way of teaching, word by word, verse by verse, book by book. Can I just tell you, and not because I'm a minister, not because I'm a man, it's by far been the best book I've ever put up in my life. And I've read thousands, thousands of words. I have thousands of books. And it's the best book I've ever read. I've ever read. Why? Because it's taught me, first and foremost, how to serve God. It's taught me how to be a spouse. It's taught me how to be a father. It's taught me how to be a son. It's taught me how to be an uncle. It's taught me how to be an administrator. It's taught me how to save money. It's taught me how to buy a house. It's taught me how to treat children. It's taught me how to deal with my adversaries. It's taught me how to deal with people who don't like me. It's taught me how to keep love people who have no regard for me. And it's taught me, most importantly, how to love and live for God. That is what Joshua was saying. He said, don't let it depart from you. If you let it depart from you, you can't serve. I used to tell my Sunday school class, in fact, I can this summer. I used to tell my Sunday school class, be careful how you act among your friends. Be careful how you act among your family members. Be careful how you act around your parents or grandparents. Because you might be the only Bible they ever pick up. You see, my brothers and sisters, everybody's not going to read the Bible. I get that. Because you know, in the church that I came from, there used to be about 200 people in service every week. But in the Bible study, if you were lucky, you saw 15. And 20 on a great day. What fascinated me was, I said, are they just living? On the sermon, on Sunday, it's a question. Not a criticism, just a question. And so, what I've learned is what this text is saying is that in order for them, and in order for you and I to serve God, we must keep the law, the word, before us. When we get into the Beatitudes that I read earlier today, what does Jesus say? Blessed are they who are persecuted. Blessed are you who mourn. Blessed are you who are me. You are the salt of the earth. You see, my brothers and sisters, you and I, as believers, you and I, who represent God, might be the only Bible you want to ever pick up. By our words. By our actions. How we respond. And I'm always reminded that when I'm convicted and someone does something to me, I often hear God telling me, yeah, Charles, I know they didn't do right by you. But how did you respond to me? Yeah, Charles, I know they don't like you for whatever reason. I know they do, but that's not what they're going to do. How do you respond to me? See, I'm always convicted that when Jesus used that that the greatest commandments, love the Lord your God with all your hearts, mind, and soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. So your neighbor ain't always the person you like. Your neighbor ain't always the person you love. Your neighbor is just your neighbor. And if I love my neighbor like I love myself, they win and I win. You win and they win. And so I'm going to leave you with a story. One of my 
for me, one of my favorite theologians was Dr. Charles Stanley, in touch with 30, 40 years ago, I would get up every morning at 5.30 and record on incense. Some of y'all don't know what that is. Some of you do. Oh, most of people know what incense is. And so was over people. That young man, he, I didn't find out, what's that? <laughs> now they don't even have, they don't use CDs anymore. They use MP3, they use transcripts, they use phone. But I listen to Charles Stanley every morning. And he shared a story when the church that he was at was at the political time. He had 10, 15 different homes. And churches were begging him to come, begging him to come. The little old lady came and said, you know, young man, you need to come and see me talk to me. He's like, yeah, yeah, I'll get to see you. I'll get to see you. I'll get to see you. So one day he goes to her house. And as he goes to her house, she has a man up with him. Little nurse, short lady, comes up and says, young man, come here, I want to show you something. You see this picture? It was a picture of Daniel in the lion's den. And then she said to him, look at Daniel. Daniel's not looking at the lion. He's looking at the lion. What made that story so fascinating to me was that Dr. Stanley said right then and there that was one of the greatest sermons he'd ever heard in his life. Because despite, if you know anything about the story of Daniel in the lion's den, Daniel was thrown in the lion's den killed by the lions. But God closed the lion in the mind. Because Daniel had his eyes focused on God. And Charles Stanley said that day, every walk that he got from every church, he grew in the God. And he retired from that church 35 years ago. What am I doing? When you serve God and God alone, no matter what your obstacle is, He's got you. He's got you. If you keep your eyes on the prize, he's got you. For the last two decades of my life, every office I go to, and I'm going to get to this office, I have a picture of Daniel standing in the line behind him. Every one of us need that somewhere in our memory now to remember that all the distractions, all the problems in our lives are lying. But it's a serving God, keeping our eye on the prize. The line of mouths will be closed. They'll bite, but they won't bite you. Amen. 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 Our next hymn is called, as partners in Christ's service. We are all called on this journey, this Christian journey, to be partners for the Savior. Hymn number four, four, three.
20 in our prayers. We pray for this November 12, 2023. We pray for Rose, Kim, Liz, John, and Annie. We pray for our veterans. We pray for Brian, Dale, Jason, Megan, Gabrielle, Richie, and Joe. We pray for Claire, Clara May, Beverly, Joyce, and Joan. We pray for Bree, CJ, Dee, and we pray for the conflict with Israel and Hamas. And we pray for our world. This is our moment of sound prayer. Let's pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, our be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thou is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. As we conclude this morning's service, we turn to hymn number 298, God of our Father. Blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.